What's up, y'all? It's your man Barry Bonds. I'm back with another Straight No Chaser. I want to give you guys a shout out because I thank you for watching my content. And uh, as my as I'm trying to reach a thousand subscribers by May 1st, you guys are definitely tapping in with me. And I hope that I'm creating some value for you guys. I hope that I'm not just on here just rambling and talking about a bunch of nothing. But look, I want to touch back on this uh, Manosphere uh, situation that's going on right now. You know, if you haven't been dialed in, the Manosphere is going through a lot of changes right now because there's a lot of infighting going on. And, you know, with any organization, infighting, you know, can actually be the death of any situation. You know? And with that, um, we have to try to, you know, create some type of middle ground between content creators who are on here because us being men, you know, they say that we're like 17, we have this, uh, 17 times the amount of uh, estrogen, I'm sorry, of testosterone, sorry, testosterone than uh, women have. So we're going to get into it. That's just no doubt about it. We're going to get into it, you know? So with that being said, I want to touch on just something that just happened just recently. Uh, as you know, uh, there was a live with uh, Bernard Riley. Shout out to Bernard Riley. And uh, he had, you know, a bunch of content creators on there. And one of them was uh, actually Obsidian and one of them was Minister Jap, uh, as well as ARC. And um, I believe there was somebody else on there. But, you know, forgive me for not knowing or forgive me for forgetting. But um, they were on there talking about, you know, just some, you know, situations that were going on regarding Kevin Samuels. But I just wanted to touch on the toll that's going to be paid, that's going to be, you know, at, uh, just pretty much, you know, at the end of all of this beefing. I'm about to get comfortable with you guys, man. Look, this whole infighting that's going on right now, man, it's bad. It's really bad for the space because, of course, number one, the message is being drowned out by all of this infighting. The message for you guys who don't know is for black men, since we haven't had representation or good representation in the past, we don't have much of a marketing, you know, system that handles our marketing and handles how people look at us, you know, on the outside and their perception of us. You know, thing you see is on TV, on the news, you know, black men committing all type of crimes, it's not the other. So if you only watch that, then you only think that, you know, black men are just, you know, violent criminals, but that's not it. There's so much more to us, you know, um, in this country where we're 13 percent and I would say six and a half percent is or six percent or even less than that is African-American men. You got to take a segment of that for the ones who are incarcerated. And, you know, the rest of us that are out here living in a free world, you know, it, it's it's kind of daunting because, you know, we're looked upon as being these scary creatures, these scary people that just commit acts of crimes and violence upon other people. And that's not us, you know, that's not, you know, what we are. That's not, you know, the totality of, you know, our existence here, it's not. Um, I think that, you know, with this manosphere, the good part about this is that, you know, it's been changing the perception about black men, that we are, you know, not a monolith, you know, we are uh, different people, you know, we are productive, we're smart, we're educated, uh, you know, some of us are nerds, some of us are jocks, some of us are, you know, what you would call boogies and ray rays, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, we have the same type of issues and problems that all other groups face. And it's very important for us to be able to put this out there and let it be known so that, you know, when you're walking down a dark street and you're behind some old lady or whatever, you know, you can kind of tell that, you know, she's going to clutch her purse a little tighter or she's going to try to get out your way just because the news and all of the media has hyped it up that we are just purse snatching, raping, killing, shooting type of people. And that's not us. But... You know, since the Manosphere is coming around and uh, is, you know, taking off since the pandemic, to be honest with you, say, taking off largely since the pandemic and we got more content creators in the space, you know, lending their voice to try to change the narrative. Um, there's going to be a lot of competition, 
You know, it's just like the music industry. That's what I liken it to, the music industry, because in the music industry, you got a lot of people who think they're artists, who want to be artists, but just don't have it in them, uh, the talent in them innately, you know, to be an artist. But some of them are, uh, are very successful and they're getting money. But I mean, let's be honest, at the end of the day, they suck, you know, and that's kind of how the black manosphere is right now. You got a lot of content creators popping up out of nowhere. And you know, one might say that, you know, maybe one of them as well, you know, but I started this because I was a fan of the black manosphere for a while and I just wanted to lend my voice. You know, I wanted to lend my voice, you know, to be honest with you, I don't have a dog in the race as far as, you know, trying to claim or make claims on anything, but I'm watching some of the errors, some of the mistakes that are being made right now between these content creators because, you know, I'm looking at a lot of, uh, I will say competitive drive and competitive, um, uh, let me see, drama, competitive drama that's going on between these content creators. You know, everyone wants to be the top dog. You got a lot of alpha males out here, those who claim to be alpha, those who are, you know, half alpha, half beta, you know, whatever you want to call it. You know, every man has that certain amount of pride in him as well as that competitive driving spirit. So that's what we're seeing right now. We're seeing a lot of people who want to, you know, their, sh their star to shine the brightest. And, um, you know, rightfully so. I don't blame them at all. You know, but in this, you got to understand that there's a lot of people that are listening to your message. It's a lot of people that are taking the words that you say and they are really, you know, padding and you know planning their life their moves their decisions on the information is given so I, you know i just want to just give this to you guys man you know um right now the infighting has to stop it has to stop there's enough room there's enough money for everybody enough money for everybody to be able to coexist in this space and be happy and to be able to put their message out there and sharing with one another and i mean sharing by you know if you put a thought out there if you put a word out there that you coin or a phrase and someone happens to use it then i think that you should actually feel very very complimented and and, and very flattered by someone uh using you know your words you know using your catchphrases because it's catching on now i do understand what you're saying as far as you know and not being uh, uh, attributed to, you know, that particular catchphrase or that particular thought. I do understand that, you know, we do need to give credit where credit is due. But I know my father taught me back in the day, he taught me, look, man, you gotta fight your battles. You gotta fight your, learn how to fight your battles. Learn what battles to take, what battles to not take. And also me studying the, tw uh, the 48 Laws of Power taught me to never take a side. You know, in this space, you don't need to take a side. Take a side for what? Because nine times out of 10, these are all people that you have never met before. You have no type of background with them. You have no type of history with them. You probably haven't spoken to them and, you know, shared any type of space with them or space or time with them at all. So don't take any sides, you know, remain neutral because, you know, taking sides only will leave you hurting in the end. Now, I will tell you this is that the message is being clouded It's definitely being clouded and drowned out, you know, with all of this infighting, the message for those who don't understand the official message of the manosphere from what I interpret is for men to be able to, um, venture after their, uh, their purpose and to be the best representations of themselves. That means work out. That means, you know, educate yourself. That means try new things. That means read, gain information, gain insight, make money, save money, and then look for all of the other things that lie on the other side as far as women, relationships, marriage, starting a family, okay? You do not wanna start a family and you're not prepared. You know, you want to make sure that you're prepared to start a family, prepared to take on another being, you know, whether that's a child or whether that's your girlfriend or your wife. You want to be able to take care of these things, to be able to, you know, fully be able to provide. And a lot of us right now 
are out here willy-nilly, smashing and dashing, getting chicks pregnant, pull-out game is super weak, creating babies. Creating babies and creating homes that are definitely gonna be broken and then creating a come-up plan for, you know, the Tatiana who you got impregnated and for them to be able to get, you know, free provisions like apartment, like a monthly check, child support, WIC, TANF, you know, if you have TANF or whatever, whatever you call it in your area. This is how these chicks come up. They get pregnant. Now they can move out their mama house, get their own spot and start cooking from there. Taking your uh, annual um, income tax check if you're behind on arrears and collecting child support from you. These are the things and the ways that they're able to come up. So if we're able to get this message out there for you guys to stop just smashing on these chicks, no rubber, blasting all up in them, getting them pregnant, then trust me, your life is gonna be a lot better. Trust me on this one, man. You guys gotta listen to this. But all this infighting is clouding the message up that cats are more interested in the beef more so than in the message. So I really, really want to create this video or this message so that I can, you know, so somebody will hear this and say, look, man, let's go ahead and stop all of this beef because nine times out of 10, let's be real. You'll never meet the other person. You'll never run into the other person nine times out of 10. So the other content creator you beefing with, you never run on and run into them. Two is that at the end of the day, you know, is the beef worth it? Is it really worth it? You know, are you trying to gain viewers, gain subscribers? Well, I mean, what are you trying to do? You know, there's other ways to handle situations such as this. And then three, I tell you that the amount of people that you're going to turn off by all of this beefing, because not everybody likes conflict. Not everyone wants conflict. Not everyone wants to hear, you know, uh, 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 content creator A talking about content creator B. Nobody, not a lot of people want to hear that. We want to, we come for the message to hear about, you know, best practices, you know, good advice. That's what we want to hear. That's why I came to the spot. I'm an older guy. I got a lot of knowledge, but I love to hear brothers sharing, brothers building. That's what I love to hear. I'm here for that. I'm not here to hear two guys beefing with each other because for that, I say, look, book a flight, get into the same space, put them dukes up and duke it out. And then let's get back to work. That's how it should work. You know, brothers back in the day in my day used to fight it out. They used to use these, fight it out and then get back to work. And nine times out of 10, when we would fight it out back in the day, we had such a respect that we would, you know, grow from our, for for that particular person that we would end up coming best friends or really close friends after the, the after the fight my father would tell me friction makes things smoother and in a lot of senses that is the exactly what happens friction makes things smoother so i just hope that guys are really open-minded and aren't holding grudges because that's what females do females hold grudges females get bitter females get petty Men, we talk about things, we can't work it out, we can't get along, we bang it out, and after that we come back into the fold stronger than ever. So I'm hoping that you guys can do that. I'm hoping that you guys will think and then speak, and if you can't get along, find a way to work that out. Either ignore a person, or find a way just to be able to coexist in this space because there's a lot of money for all of us. Now, I do think that with all of this infighting, you know, the woman's fear is probably rejoicing right now because they don't want men to get on their game. They don't want men to get, you know, and hear the information that the good information is being put out there. They don't want that. <laughs> they want to keep us off balance, you know, some of them, a fraction of them anyway. Some women, let's be honest, some women definitely want us to get the shit together so that they can, you know, get with us and, and, and build a strong home or build a strong family. Not every woman is against you. Not every woman wants to see your downfall. Yeah, their nature is a little screwed up, but not every woman wants to see the worst for you. 
So I just want us to, man, just really get it together, cut out all the fighting because it's stupid. At the end of the day, if you're not going to see the person in, 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 in person, you know, and put those hands up and duke it out and settle those differences, then what are we doing? We're just online creating a whole bunch of bullshit that has no resolution. And we need to have a resolution. I'm all for that. So take what you will from this message, man. I just wanted to tap in one time and uh, I just want to, uh, you know, give you guys something from my heart because, you know, I hate to see brothers going, you know, crazy against each other right now, especially while the spot is so hot, man. You know, I mean, I'm thinking like the black manosphere is about to take off stronger and, and, and further than it's ever been. And now it's crumbling at the seams. Now it's about to just pretty much, you know, fall apart and just you know be done but my last point here that i will say is that i do understand that there's two type of black men man you got two type of black men you got ones that they call the educated lames or those who are straight laced you know i guess you will call them squares or whatever whatever you want to call them and then you got the pookie and ray rays or you got the cast that's out here but i'm going to tell you that there is a third male that i feel that a lot of black men um um you know resonate with um and identify with and that is that dual type of male where you got street sense street sensibilities you know the streets but then you're educated as well so you got these two things merging as one you know you got the educated street smart person that can pretty much move in any room any room take them to the block they can hold their own you take them into a boardroom and they can hold their own i really think that that's what we need to aspire to be we need to be well-rounded we need to be thorough me myself i grew up in a street type of environment in ohio i grew up in a very street type of environment i hung out with a whole bunch of cats that you know just straight street dudes because that's that's all it was around me but i still had that base of education of spirituality and a very well-rounded childhood you know that my father my mother provided for me you know traveling seeing new things trying new things reading a lot of books but i still had that base of also being in the streets you know and uh moving around in the streets so i got i call it duality you know and i'll be honest with you <laughs> in my opinion that's what i feel like we all should be striving for to be well-rounded and there's a space for that man in the black manosphere so i don't think we need to be fighting infighting and you know all this beef so you know the suits and the pookies we need to figure out a way to merge these two things because a lot more people identify with the middle ground more than the two outside, you know, entities. So let's figure out a way to get this thing together, man. Let's figure out a way to create peace. Let's figure out a way to figure this out. And let's keep this manosphere going stronger than ever. So that's it for right now. I just want to give my quick word I hope that you guys take something from it, learn something from it. Please like, share, and subscribe to the channel. And uh, send me an email or a comment. Let me know what you think about this message. As always, my motto is positive minds move forward. I hope you guys thrive, get paid, and uh, live a great life. All right? Tap in with me regularly. I'm always here. My man, I'm Barry Bonds. And uh, this has been Straight No Chaser. So I'll get with you guys later. All right. Peace.